Not really. Uh, you know, I guess one parallel we could draw would be the tech wreck. Uh, you know, when we had the tech wreck, that was a much more widespread uh, exposure. Uh, and in fact, it had barely had a perceptible effect on the real economy because it was not a stock market crash, but just a, sec a segment of the stock market. But it was highly speculative. It was, there was all kinds of bubbles there. And, um, and so I think if you take that experience to heart, uh, if something like that were to happen in the, in the uh, cryptocurrency space, it would probably be even smaller today. Uh, but what I think is, is uh, it, it certainly has the potential. So uh, you know, I don't want to minimize the risk that you're raising. Uh, because uh, any mania has the, has the scope to get much bigger. Central banks are all talking about the speculation in this space. So the natural <clears> question <throat> arises, well, why not regulate it? Do you want to regulate the trading of Bitcoin? So um, I have no doubt that uh, at, a, at least uh, for purposes of consumer protection, uh, there will, we will be developing uh, regulations around this space uh, in due course. But, but what we're being careful to do here is to not stifle innovation. We, we recognize that, that these innovations have absolutely phenomenal potential to improve efficiency of our payment system, and as I mentioned with DLT, a much wider application. So the last thing you want to do is play whack-a-mole and you know, regulate these things as soon as they're out of the gate. So most countries have gone with what, what they call sort of a sandbox approach, which says, as long as you stay within these boundaries, go ahead and experiment. Uh, let's, let's have some new things that happen. And uh, when, if, they, if they really catch on, then we'll know it's going to be part of the system, and then it would pose risk to the system, and only then is it necessary for us to uh, have a, a better regulatory framework around it. If we talk about the progress in the technology behind Bitcoin blockchain, one uh, institution, one big exchange has already gone down the path of using the technology. The Australian Stock Exchange, uh, one of the first to say it's using blockchain for clearing and settlement of equities, replacing its traditional technology. So this promises to cut trading costs, uh, drive Australia to the forefront of financial yeah. innovation, but many are doubting just how much integrity there is in the system that has been three years in the making. In this type of situation, are you concerned about how rigorous the tests have been in the chase in it, or the race towards innovation? Well, in a word, yes. Uh, and this is another reason why none of this stuff is going to happen overnight. Central banks are more careful than this. And so, for instance, the Bank of Canada, we've adopted a, a let's try it before we, we even uh, consider it approach. So experimentation. So we've, over the past uh, year and a half, run several actual experiments with blockchain uh, with private sector counterparties and built mimic, you know, mimicked our settlement system and try to test the costs and benefits that are, of course, there's some big claims about the, the benefits and found that many of those benefits aren't uh, quite as, as high as advertised. Uh, there's still progress happening there, so again, next phase, we'll test it again. Uh, so I have every reason to think that it's gonna find its way into many settlement systems in course, and uh, that is gonna save a lot of money, it's gonna save errors, it's gonna, it's gonna save a, a lot of capital in the, in, the, uh, in the banking system. There's a lot of benefits right there. Uh, but it's not something that's going to happen tomorrow because we, we're going to test drive these things very carefully before we use them. I gather that's code name Jasper. Is that the program? Yes, our, 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 yes, we made it into a code name because we didn't really want to get people too hyped up about it. And uh, so you went for a catchy name. One of our people was doing a thing like this, and it was a closed session, and they put up a thing that said CADCOIN on it, and that's what we called the, the digital currency in, the, in Jasper. And it, it went like a flash. Uh, someone, someone texted it, and next thing you know, we had to answer all those questions. There was no such thing as CAD coin. It was just a, a theoretical construct. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.